Hi and welcome to a RetroNAS installation video. In this video we're going to look at installing Telnet on RetroNAS uh, and accessing that from a retro computer. Uh, in this example using Windows 95. However you can use it from uh, any retro computer uh, that has a Telnet client and an IP address. So first I'm going to launch my command prompt uh, and SSH into my Raspberry Pi. and then run uh, RetroNAS. Uh, now I'm met with my usual uh, screen on what terminal to choose. I'm just going to go with the default because I'm running uh, modern SSH here, so that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go to install things and I'm going to choose Telnet. So uh, Ansible internally, the tool that does all the installations, uh, will handle the Telnet install for me and configure that so that it's uh, always running on every reboot. So anything in green uh, is where something remains unchanged, anything yellow is where something has changed. Sometimes yellow, sometimes orange, depending on the, uh, the style of terminal you're running. And that's all done. Uh, now we can go to the main menu, back to check services and check that that's running. And we can see that the uh, the daemon that handles Telnet, which is this uh, inetd service, is running. Um, so it handles a few different things, Telnet's one of them, that's running, that should all be good. Alright, so now we can check out uh, RetroNAS. I'll actually exit out of it here. Um, so let's, I've got a virtual machine here with Windows 95 running, so I'll fire that up. Now this is running in a very vanilla state. This is uh, Windows 95, I think it's, uh, it's one of the first OEM releases. Uh, I'm not sure if it was A or B. Um, however, it's, it's been installed in a completely default capacity, so I don't have any video drivers installed, so it looks quite ugly. I'm actually uh, running this at about double uh, scaling, so this is 640x480 internally, uh, but I've just scaled it up so we can record it a little bit easier, which is why it looks kind of ugly. Um, I've configured it with a bunch of network protocols, including TCP IP, NetBuoy, uh, and Client for Microsoft Networks. Um, I'll go through a completely separate video on how to install all of that, but for now the important thing is that it runs uh, with a network stack uh, and it has an IP address, that's the main thing for this. Um, I've set it up with the same username and password that I've got on my Raspberry Pi, so my Raspberry Pi, I log in with username Pi, password Pi, here I'm doing exactly the same thing. So from the desktop I can just click start run and type in telnet and then the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Uh, now this will ask for the Raspberry Pi's username and password as a login, so again this is being transmitted in plain text across the network, this is completely unencrypted, so please only do this on a network that you trust. So I'm logging in with my username and password and I'm running RetroNAS. Now to illustrate the point here, uh, I'll show you what happens when we run RetroNAS in the different uh, um, terminal modes. So this is the menu that pops up at the beginning of RetroNAS that often asks you whether you want a legacy uh, mode or a modern mode. Alright, so I'm going to go uh, with the modern mode. I'm going to go with number one uh, just to show what it kind of looks like. 
uh, and you can see here it really doesn't like it. Um, sometimes you get colour out of this, sometimes you don't. Uh, the encoding is completely messed up. If I, if I push my arrow keys it kind of bombs me straight back out to the command prompt, so that's no good. Um, so let's try that again, but uh, this time we'll use a mode that's a bit more compatible with a legacy operating system. Alright, so we're back to our menu again. I'm going to choose option 2 now, uh, which is the VT100 uh, terminal mode. Uh, and this should hopefully make things look a little bit better. So, um, still not great. Um, there's a few issues if I scroll up and down, things change. Now, I think that might just be to do with the resolution of my, uh, of my uh, internal code when it comes to how uh, RetroNAS menu is configured. I'll try and fix that, but for now at least you can certainly uh, get in and check things. So let's go back and check our Telnet service here, which is actually, um, we could make sure we check out that the one that's highlighted. Again, I'll try and fix this in future releases to make this a bit cleaner, but for now at least it's usable. Uh, and you can see there that the INETD service is active and running. Um, there's a few uh, issues when it comes to how some of these things, especially where they what would be color coded on a more modern terminal is uh, shown. But that's um, at least working to a, to a point. So from here you can manage um, your RetroNAS, at least from your legacy operating system. You can install other services if you want um, and use your system. Uh, but also I guess Telnet's just working in general. So if you want to do uh, other things just in your, uh, in your terminal, uh, they're available for you there to do. You can manage your Raspberry Pi, you can navigate around, you can reboot it, you can do all those sorts of things just by telnetting to it. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll have some cooler tools that you can use. Um, I'd like to look at some BBS software and things like that that we can export over telnet and have those accessible as well. Um, but at least it gives you an option to actually use and manage your Raspberry Pi and your RetroNAS from your legacy operating system using features like telnet that were built into uh, a large amount of legacy operating systems.